My name is Ruman Bello, and I can't wait to be a farmer. My mama grows all sorts of crops in our garden, but I want to go big. And see, the problem is, is that I'm still five years old. I can help my mama get water and dig some holes, though, but that's about it. Things are pretty scary in the big cities, though. The Civil War hasn't ended in a long, long time. My mother told me all about the history of our world. Her name is Rometa. She told me that there are two great big cities called Arginia and Mythal. Arginia is a large semicircular city spanning miles along the Arginian Bay Area's coast. We live in the northwestern part of the world called Verusha. Arginia is mostly made of humans with some dwarven and elven minorities. Arginia is divided into three districts of varying wealth referred to as its rings. The outer ring contains the poor slums and the ghettos of the city. The middle ring contains most of the commercial buildings and middle class housing. And also a really cool place called the Archive. That's the biggest library in the world. The final innermost ring contains the royalty and aristocracy of Arginia, littered with gaudy jewelry and gold and it's enveloped by a constant smell of lavender. This also contains the great royal castle, where Queen Jade lays in office. Now Mythal, on the other hand, is a wonderful and whimsical city of mostly elves. There is a huge monument in the center of the market district that is secretly some wizard college, but no one has ever seen anyone go inside. College, the, I mean the castle there, has old King Onvir, a wise and powerful old man. The Arginian military has the numbers. They have thousands of soldiers who focus on wielding magic and swords, where Maithal specializes in stealthy archers, assassins, and ambush. These guys also use magic, but they primarily utilize siege weapons that wipe out hundreds of soldiers in a single shot. I heard that Arginia uses trolls and giants against the Mythalians. We live in a small farm town called Terenzian, where we grow crops for Arginia. We are very small and peaceful. There are like maybe 30 people in the whole town. Everyone knows everyone, and we are growing every day. But we are still new, and that's okay. Most people are supposed to, or, I mean, more, more people are supposed to come out and help us soon with the farms, uh, because a lot of the land around here is really fertile. I never really knew my dad, and my mom never really talked about him. I wish I would have, I wish I had a dad. He would be strong, and he would kill all the bad Mytholian soldiers. I'm going to try to grow up big and strong so I can help farm and help mama live well. She says the world is corrupt and the Mytholians are the bad guys. And my mama always said, You know, if there's more to life, I guess I'll never know. Because I ain't never going to leave this place. Now I agreed with her, but I was still confused. So she continued, I pray to the gods this is where we stay because we have a home here, Rue. It's ours and it's cute. Most importantly, it's where my adorable little father was born. She pinched my cheek and kissed my forehead. These dirty fields are forgotten by horror. Do you hear that stream outside of town? The wind that blows against the house? The roosters that wake us up? Baby, that's the sound of peace and quiet. You are safe here, love. Well, I want to make you real proud. I want to help grow crops and make a living, and you'll never have to work a day in your life. Baby, you make me proud. Every damn day we wake up and you smile at me in the morning. It warms my little heart, but you know what would make me jealous, Farmer Brown? That little girl, Edith, that you smile at in the mornings, too. I began to blush, and she poked my belly. I see you, little man. You should say hello. I squinted my eyes at her and scrunched my nose, hiding my face. Mom! Shh! Shh! My mother laughed. All right, sweetheart. Girls are gross. She gave me a warm smile and pointed towards the door. Think you can get a bucket of water from the well? I'll make her some tea and possibly some sweetbreads from the bakery. Okay. 
Oh, I'll just be a minute. You see, our house was rather average but special. We had a tiny little kitchen with cast iron cookware. Our fireplace was large and made from cobblestone. Above the fireplace was our family heirloom, an ornate looking longsword. It was fancy and wrapped up. My mother showed it to me a few times, but it mostly rested there in case of emergencies. Our cottage was a single story where I had my own bedroom and everything. Our house was primarily made of wood, stone, and thatch, like many of the buildings here in Terencia. And I grabbed the bucket from our kitchen and left the house. Outside, I hear a number of different goats and sheep and cows, alongside a lot of people of the town going about their business. Shopkeepers are setting up their stands up and they're shouting, Go get your fish! They don't taste as bad as they look! Ha <laughs> ha! I took one look at the fish, I laughed, and it went along with my business. It really kind of smelled. Horses whinnied and dug at the dirt. My house was across the village from the bakery where that little girl was. Now our houses were across town from each other, so hopefully that there isn't the chance that we're gonna- Oh my god, there she goes walking out of her house with a bucket. She's walking towards me with the bucket in her hands. She's going to get water at the same time as me. Oh no, this is terrible. What do I do? Okay, okay, okay. I'm gonna play it cool. She's wearing a pink dress. I'm in a pink dress. No, wait, 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 wait. Hold on. No, that's not right. I'm in my overalls. I'm five, she's five. You're cool, she's cool. Oh my god, she's coming closer. Okay, do I stink? I know, I took a bath in the river a few days ago. Is my hair all right? Yeah, it doesn't matter. Okay, 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 here we go. <clears throat> okay, gotta, gotta check the beard. Oh, still no beard yet. Okay, um. <clears throat> Howdy. I totally nailed that. She tucked her brown hair behind her ears and she looked at me with those big old eyes. One of them was gray and the other one was blue. That was crazy, but that's what I kind of thought was cute about her. She placed the bucket on the hook and began to lower the crank. She pulled a tight smile and beamed at me, responding with, Hi. Before I was able to respond, I saw from behind her a huge gang of bandits riding in on horses. There were dozens of them, all carrying swords and daggers. Their clothes are nasty and their armor is beaten up. They whip their horses and stampede into our village. The townsfolk start to scream and shout, raising pitchforks against them in an attempt to fight back. In retaliation, they throw glass bottles full of oil under our houses and light them with torches. Soon, many of the buildings have caught fire and we are scrambling on what to do. I, I was so scared, but I could tell that Edith was, she was terrified. Um, Edith, go, go find your dad. At that moment, my vision went blurry. Black smog polluted the reddish sky where buildings began to crumble around me. I had to make it back to my mother. She would know what to do. Sprinting as fast as I could, I ran back to my house, filled with horror. Our house was engulfed in an inferno. Covering my nose and holding my breath, I made our way I made I, I, I made my way into the front door where I saw my mother with an expression I had never seen before. She was horrified and her face was contorted into a hateful glare at another figure standing in a living room, hesitant towards moving him moving towards him. She was holding this sword that we kept above our fireplace in one hand and holding a flat palm to the other man. This man was half-elven, wearing a tanned leather set of armor, donning multiple slash marks engraved into the hide. On his bracers are tallies of different carvings of something that probably meant something to him. His hair is a gross, disgusting blonde, caked in a layer of grime, dirt, and grease. Sweat and soot decorate his awful face. His nose looks like it's been broken multiple times, leaving it massive and crooked on his sunken in, accentuated features. His chin is pointed and his jawline is cut sharp. His smile produces a corn yellow, cracked set of orange and black teeth, stained from years of alcohol and tobacco. He is well over six foot tall, lean and broad. All over his skin are scars. My mother manages to spot me before the bandit does. 
he raises a, sim- a sigmar, a scimitar to my mother, snarling and staring her dead in the eyes. His voice is grisly and harsh as he calls out, Oi, what's wrong, girly? Cat got your tongue? Got the hearts for me, huh? <laughs> He bites his lip and he spits towards her. Go on then, lass. Show me what you've got. Been a while since we had a good toss-up, huh? Around us, the building started to crumble. The roof began to cave in and embers jumped across my skin. My lungs stung from the smoke and I struggled not to cough. Sweat poured down from my body and sizzled onto the floor. Our house was like an oven and I was horrified at what was going on. Behind me, bandits slashed at the farmers, spraying blood all over the walls and brutalizing their bodies. They stormed into the houses and looted as much as they can before moving on to a new building. What brought my attention back to my mother was her scream as the glass from our window shattered in, spraying the living room in a blanket of glass shards. My mother, in a quick movement, grabs a fistful of ash from the fireplace and splashes it into the face of the bandit, temporarily blinding him. He spews forth the amalgamation of slurs and grunts. She sprints over to me and drops her and he's holding my face in her hands. Baby, okay, just listen to me. Everything's gonna be all right. I love you. Just please stay hidden for me, all right, Rue? Stay strong, baby, okay? I love you. We'll get through this. With this, I proceeded to talk myself away in a pile of rubble. You bloody harlot, you're gonna fucking regret that. I don't know what the hell you're getting at here, but I'm gonna gut you and leave you to burn. She ripped her long skirt past her knees, allowing her to assume a better stance. She stood back up and braced her sword as the bandit wiped his eye and blinked hard, sending tears flying away from his face. He raised up his sycamore and batters down onto my mother. My mom grunted and as sparks flew around the room. Quickly, she pushed forward, swinging her weapon wildly. The bandit effortlessly parried away the strikes, and my mom breathed hard, desperate, gasping for air as smoke filled the room. They go back and forth this for a few minutes before my mother screams out, Leave me alone, Magnus! Why, well, that would just be in bad taste. You made a promise for me, and I plan on keeping it. You're still weak and worthless. I left my mark plain and simple. If you hadn't antagonized and threatened us, your whole village would still be here. But here you are, pretending to be bold and the hero. Well, let me tell you this, sweetheart. The world is fucking gnarly. There ain't no room for pissants like you who won't listen and do what they're told. My mother attempted to swing again, but Magnus thrust his arm forward, catching her arm and twisting her wrist. She ripped the sword away from him and exploded into a coughing fit, attempting to speak, but choked on her words. Magnus continued, You know what, lass? I've had about enough of this. The bandit went for another strike, but faked out my mother as he dropped his sword and kicked her in the chest. My mother flew back a few feet, smashing her head onto the fireplace. My blood boiled as I filled with rage. I could feel myself getting dizzier, but I didn't care. I was so filled with hatred that my fingers went numb. And shooting myself forward, I picked up a piece of glass and clutched it between my fingers. The glass cut deep into my fingers, but I only had one goal in mind. Letting out a scream, I charged forward and slashed into Magnus with a shard. The makeshift blade sunk deep into his stomach, and I let go of it. My fingers stung, and I was beginning to lose consciousness. I breathed heavy as Magnus let out a pained yell. God damn it, you stupid little shit! With this, he balled up a fist and smashed into my cheek, sending me to the ground. I glanced backwards towards the wound, and he was bleeding profusely. He put his hand on the glass and grit his teeth. He attempted to pull it out and stopped halfway through the process. He snarled towards me, but bit his lip, and he stomped his foot and ran over to me and planted a boot swiftly into my ribs. Water 
blood water falling from his side as he yelled out a horrific rage. I held up my hands to defend myself, but I was helpless. My, my mother picked up a flaming piece of rubble and threw it at him, slightly burning his skin. He snapped his gaze back towards my mother and put his boot down on her throat. She choked and tried to force him off of her to no avail. He huffed and spit blood off to the side before quickly wiping his brow with his elbow. He gave my mother one last awful stare as he plunged the blade deep into her chest, causing her to gasp for air immediately. She glanced down towards herself and was quickly pulling into a thick, dark puddle of crimson. She looked back at him with fear and gurgled. And she looked at me and sobbed profusely. Magnus cursed and clutched his side, still dripping with blood. He looked back at me and grinned, displaying his nasty teeth. You know what, you tiny little bastard? That was a wonderful shot. In a weird way, it makes me proud. I'm gonna regret sparing you. Enjoy your mother while you still have her. I'm fucking done with this. With this, he stumbled his way out of our house, coughing and groaning. Ugh. All right, boys. We're fucking done here. Get the hell out. He climbed onto one of the horses and sped out of the village. I shambled my way over to my mother. Her face was extremely pale and gone. She trembled in places as she meekly raised her hand towards my face. Tears rolled down from her eyes as she blinked hard. She attempted to speak but only gurgled into herself. Blood bubbled from her mouth as she coughed up a wet puddle trailing down the sides of her cheeks. As she coughed, some of the blood smoke splashed on in my face and I sobbed. I held her in my arms as her eyes rolled to the back of her head, and she went limp. Mama? Mama? Please wake up! You can't sleep now! Mama! Mama, please! You can't leave me! I don't want to be alone, Mama! Confused, I sobbed and tried to drag her out of the house. I exploded into a coughing fit and struggled to find air. I was suffocating and my mind was clouding up. Exhausted, I couldn't find the strength to keep pulling and I fell unconscious onto my sleeping mother. Feeling the heat engulf the room and her final words echoing in my mind.